Italy versus Scotland in Rome. This was where the away team were heavy favourites, the heaviest favourites to win this weekend in the Six Nations. And I've got Alka with me here to discuss it. How you doing, mate? I'm doing very well. What the hell just happened there? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> I had that reaction after about five minutes, after about 20 minutes, after about 20, like all the way through this game, I was like, what on earth is going on? This is yeah. one of the wildest internationals I've ever seen, let alone a Six Nations international, which, you know, historically it tend to be a little bit tighter. But yeah. I mean, try and start breaking this one down for me, mate. What, what, what are your uh, overall thoughts? Well, I just rug, rugby wins, you know, um, what a, what a fantastic opening game to, to a massive weekend. Um, where I mean, the crowd were amazing, electrifying. You had lots of traveling Scots, but the the home crowd was was good. The MC was was brilliant. They need to get him in Twickenham and, and into um, the Aviva. He was he was outstanding. Um, there was, I mean, some of the errors and drop balls. It was like the you know sack the juggler, but it, but it was such an, a spectacle. It was amazing. It was like watching a basketball game um, and, um, you know, a, a dream start for a, for a, de- a, a, a debutant in, in, in Lina. Um, it was just, Try out and, uh, yeah. And uh, <laughs> what are the odds of a ball falling off a tee for a penalty? <laughs> Pretty much the same position. It was just what I absolutely loved it. I've just laughed and giggled and cheered and yeah, it was great. Quality game. Yeah, fair play to to Garbisi when that happened in the first minute. That he smiled and laughed as well, laughed. and then casually put the ball back on tee and whacked it straight through the middle. Then laughed all the way back to the halfway line as well. You know, just thinking about oh my god, what could have happened last last time out. Yes, but TT, now let, I need to bring you up in this. I tweeted you. You see, you see what happens when you don't get charged. You know, like <laughs> he, he kicked us. So you know, what, what were you saying? It, it, it all depends. It, it, it had no effect in the in the end thing. Well, now nah, he was. He'd obviously gone through that, and and probably it probably relaxed him right down. Right, he just swung it, and what what a kick! Um, yeah, but so odd that it happened again. Weird. Yeah. Now then, talking about the whole basketball weird, like crazy rugby that then happened for the next, I don't know, 15 minutes at least, when Scotland just wanted to seem to offload every single time they got anywhere near a tackle. And like some of them went to hand, but most of them didn't. And if they didn't, it seemed to bounce off the floor and go straight to another Scottish player. Yeah. And like it was it was just absolutely wild to play in the first few minutes. There was a huge tackle from Nicotera on Schumann that completely upended him, um, which was amazing. But eventually, Scotland just kept playing and kept playing, just staying really positive. And Ferguson got over for the first try. And then again, it was almost this very similar thing for the second try when Stain got over. Italy just eventually ran out of defenders after Scotland would just wave and wave and wave. And at that point, it was looking really, really dangerous for Italy because they could not stop Scotland's momentum at all. No, they, they, Scotland were were class. You know, a ball on a string, chucking stuff. Out. Played a little bit how Ireland played, I think, um, the other week. Uh, you know, keeping the ball alive, very much there to do a job to get the four points and the win. Um, you know, really going after scores to tries, and you know, um, did what um, France couldn't do to Italy. Um, you know, if you remember, cast your mind back to a couple of weeks where. France were all over them in that first half, and the Italian defence just was was wonderful. And to be fair, they were. I mean, what a change in in a in a team. Their defence is just their one on one tackles. The technique is just. Some of the hits were mind boggling. Um, I I uh, I wonder if the Scottish players were wearing their smart sheet gum shields today because. Um, I don't think they were because some of the bangs that were going in would have, I think, uh, set them off. But, uh, you know, Scotland uh, took their opportunities really, really well and, and, and got the scoreboard moving. And at, at stages, it kind of was, was fearing for the for Italy. Um, but they, but they, they, um, they kept in it. Yeah, they did keep in it. And similar to uh, England later in the day, they also 
kept really just trying to be positive and kept trying to play, which I thought was really important for them. Again, you don't want to go in your shell. You want to try and keep pressure in the opposition. You want to kind of keep stressing the defence. And I think really important importantly for them, they got their first try of the game soon afterwards when there was a brilliant chip through from uh, Pajarello and Brex was incredibly brave to dive in there right next to the post and skip, pick the ball up inches off the floor and score, which was, yeah, it was a great try. Uh, a, a brilliant try. And ironically, I've mentioned this on the pod before. Um, I got an opportunity to work with Gregor Townsend at London Scottish. He came down and did a session with us. And his whole session was, was on um, kicking through towards the posts. It was, it was, he had a, a drill called fish and chips. Um, and the fish call was a grubber. And it was all about aiming the kick towards the, the post. And the guys running through. So the fish was a grubber and the chips was a chip over. And I thought, oh, wow, it's straight out. Oh, you must have been, yeah, I, I know that one. But really brave from him. Um, I thought he had a great game. A few loose kicks, but I thought he played very well. And um, Menoncello was... I, I, that kid is super. Super. Like, if he was in a, if he was in a different team, he'd be... He'd be Getting all the plaudits and and probably been you know looking for awards. I, th- I thought he was fantastic today, both the centres. Yeah, Menoncello. Wow, what a powerful, powerful guy! Like he just seems to break tackles every time he gets the ball, no matter what situation he finds himself in. He's quite remarkable uh, in that way. Tactically, a couple of things for Italy. They kept going back back blind, I guess, to try and sort of avoid the, the rush defence or whatever. And it wasn't working for them. I think Scotland did their homework really well. They were just paid attention and Scotland were just there waiting for them. And I think this led to, you mentioned a couple of loose kicks from Brex. I think that led to Brex kicking a couple of times from the middle third, which we almost never see Italy do. So that's maybe a tactical choice that they've made just to try and, if it's not on, then to not overplay. I don't know, it goes a bit against their DNA, but, you know, it did work out for them in the end. I think there was one, Brex did make one very good kick. Brexit. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, well, I think it's Casada. You can see, <laughs> I got you that one. Um, it's Casada's DNA is all over it. Uh, um, and uh, he's probably had a word to say, you know, p- play, play, nothing on, give it a, give it an L hoof, hoof away. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like they've done that, um, that switch back. They did that against England in in um, the other week and um, a few times. I don't know whether that's whether they're lo- actually looking to to break off that or they're just wanting that that will keep the defence honest later on when they do different things. I don't, I don't know. Um, but they didn't get much joy out of it, really. Um, to be to be fair, but. Um, yeah, you can see Casada's DNA on this team. There's, they, they've just, he's taken a a team who we love, uh, who is very attacking, and he's kept bits of that. Then he's brought in a little bit more pragmatism and patience, and um, you know, choose your moment sort of thing. Yeah, I, I mean that they actually that led to the third Scottish try. Pazrello bounced back and then threw the interceptor Christie which ended up with the 50-22 from Russell and a try, uh, yeah. try, line-out try for Schumann. And that came directly from Italy ball, which they then tried to go back blind again. And it wasn't it wasn't on. But yeah, you're right. Maybe it was part of a bigger tactical plan to get Scotland used to coming back blind, used to coming back blind, and then flood in the same way later in the game. Mm-hmm. What impressed me but- after that though, was that Italy continued to chip away at the scoreboard. They got another couple of penalties late yeah. in the first half. And I, I, I think that shows a slightly tactical change as well compared to what we've seen previous seasons. Yeah, they, they, well, they, yeah, they, they're clearly there's also there's, there's self-belief there and they're not, they, I think they've matured um, as, I mean, some of this might be Casada, some of this might be just, you know, you know, errors on the clock and, and caps and everything else. But, you know, in these in these big test games, everyone gets to throw some punches. That's just the way it is, and you're going to go down. But you just need to remember you're you're going to get an opportunity. And I just think emotionally, they're just in a better place. They don't seem to be capitulating, you know, they they're or, or or you know, bitching among themselves or anything else. It's just getting on with, it. and 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 yeah, and towards the end of the 
the um the first half um they started to come out. I think Scott, I have a massive question about Scotland's fitness levels from you know, my background and stuff. But first half and second half they fell off really badly. Um and you know uh, you know goes to to the point I'm making that you know if you're throwing shots and you're scoring tries you're expending energy and therefore it comes back to the, to the other team but they seem to really fall off and I I thought Liner um we'll get into the other stuff he did today but the amount of energy he brought you know he was running into to when the guys got scrum penalties um he towards the end of the first half he took that quick penalty and kicked it forward and then ran all the way up uh you could see the lactic acid leaking out of him and uh, I think uh, Kinghorn just got. I know it was the the hooker was back because he got he got okay, injured. Yeah. yeah, he just ran straight by. Him. I was like, oh no! But they got the turnover then, and then I think they they either kicked they that was a long kick I think penalty, and they scored that, and then came back in. But they're just they just seem way more. Um, yeah, I don't know what it, what it is. Uh, it, it's Casada coming in, or I think it's the other coach leaving, and it's the where France and some other teams have a hangover from the World Cup. I think Italy have got a whole kind of boost from it to, to, to kind of, there's no pressure on them and they're way better than what we saw in the World Cup. Yeah, absolutely. We've spoken a couple of times now about how we felt for Italy or thought they might struggle. And even more so right at the start of the second half when um, Hugh Jones went screaming over for a try and it looked all odds that, you know, they were going to be a long way down on the scoreboard. But what did you make of that with the uh, Schumann Vincent incident? Uh, I, I don't know. It was it, Vincent certainly made the most of it, uh, but I feel he, I feel he, he kind of caused it or had the opportunity not to. I think it was clever from him. I think he had the opportunity not to get hit by. It. I think he felt he wasn't going to get make that tackle. And therefore, he kind of didn't uh, dodge Schumann or go on. So he got hit. And the referee is standing right there looking at it, you know, and doesn't call it. And then we get called back. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I think, by, look, again, by the letter of the law, it's, it was, um, he got hit off. Yeah. He didn't have the ball. I mean, I think. Yeah. I- I think I think Schumann definitely sort of ran into him and and could have could have not done it, but I also think Vincent was really super clever with with what he did as well. In terms of the referee, I think he was right to let it play through and then let the TMO come and come in and clear that up because you don't want to just blow that straight away if actually it was it was the de- uh, the defender's fault in in the first yeah. place. But yeah, super smart play from Vincent is really what I'd what I take away from that. I thought he really yeah. got the most out of it. He made them out. He, he did. He, he he kind of although although the referee ignored him sort of thing. So obviously the the TMO whether something was said to the touch judges under the posts, I don't know. But you know Ireland have been getting away with that for for ages. In fact, I think Ireland scored in the World Cup uh, against Scotland with play like that, where the runners come up and you know I think Ty Burr maybe bounced someone um, Jones in in the World Cup um, group game and 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 it wasn't called back but the but the player didn't make a meal of it so Vincent was very clever to to make a meal of it and, and um, but they were they were lucky they were lucky there yeah and this was a big swing at the start of the start of the second half that try chalked off and then just a few moments later Garbisi with a beautiful little chip through for Louis Liner. To dash through, regather, and get a try on Babo, which was uh, which was magic for him because I thought he had a pretty strong game all round. He was fantastic um, from the from the national anthem singing all the way through. Obviously, his mom was Italian; he was born there, and you know, you know, he was belting belting it out. And um, I thought he had a, a brilliant game. As I said, I think he he brought a lot more than just how what a great player he is. You know. Um, you know, lucky enough to live in London. I've seen him play in the flesh a few times, and he's he is he's top quality. But that finish was unbelievable. Beautiful kick through, and what a what a brilliant way to start off your your career for Italy. I hope he goes on and scores a you know a skin full of tries. Yeah, it, and but actually, quite importantly, at that point, or it seemed it anyway, Garbisi then missed the conversion, which was very very kickable, hitting the post again. And then, then the game went through a real scrappy phase, and, and oh, we've seen this so many times. Yeah, when 
you know, around about the hour mark when teams suddenly get in a position, they think, well, we don't want to do anything to lose the game and we just want to be in it with a fighting chance towards the end. It got very scrappy, lots of kicking going on. There was actually some box kicking going on for the first time in the game as well. Um, what do you think that is? Do you think that's purely psychological? Yeah, I think we got into that phase of I don't want to lose ball, you know, um, which we seem to be getting quite a lot of, um, the, you know, the fear of losing as opposed to going, going and 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 keep going. You know, I was I was putting on the socials, keep playing, keep playing, because as soon as you go into that kind of, uh, you know, let them have the ball and make let them make a mistake, then you know, and there's so many drop balls in that phase it was just it was just weird. <laughs> I think I said it was like an under thirteen blitz. It was just, <laughs> just, just crazy. It was a mistake, but both sides, you know, just making the weirdest mistakes. You know, the quality was down. But it's just funny what pressure does to you. Um, and you know, when you're chasing a game, it's easy, right? Because you know you got to go for it anyway. Um, but then when you're ahead, then all of a sudden you're you, it, it, the different pressures, and you you start to change the way you play. It's weird. Yeah. <clears throat> At some point during that phase, Pazrello got subbed off. For Varney, and I just thought I, I think Pazrello is one of Italy's better players now, and I think they subbed him off early previously, and I was like, oh, it's not really what I'd be doing anyway. And then very shortly afterwards, uh, Vincent, who I think had been fairly quiet up until that point, went scorching down the left hand flag. A couple of phases later, Varney scores and proves that I know nothing about rugby. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, neither of us do. Yeah, no, inspired again. You know, Casada knows what he's doing, right? And um, you know, he's, he's made some really, really good changes there. V- Vincent was, I thought, really, really, really good. Um, it was a, a, a game that suited him, as we've spoken about. He's a he's a speed player, isn't he? He likes a fast track, and he's he's not a big a big old lump like like Negri, who who was who was brilliant today. Um, but yeah, took took the took took the opportunity well, and um, that's why we're here and not the coaching teams. TT, <laughs> armchair pundits. Um, yeah. Somebody else I want to pick out on. He's always great at the line. He's always great at his passing. But I thought today, Paolo Garbisi was amazing in the air. Like he caught so many high balls, and I think it just you know it's such a great way of taking pressure off yourselves is to be able to be dominant in the air like that. And one of his takes led to a bit of a stupid penalty from Skinner being in front of the kicker. Um, that kick then got moved five yards back because they uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> they got the position a bit wrong initially. Mm. Paused the, the clock, which is fair on the kicker. All that good stuff. Garbisi steps up, nails it. At this point, seven minutes to go, 31-22 up. And I'm thinking, right, another couple of solid minutes here and then Italy should be Good to go. Didn't quite work out quite like that, though. No, that was the point um, where we were speaking earlier off air that I, I had the White Stripes on playing their their song. <laughs> uh, the thing, literally, when he was take, taking that, that kick and he had it moved back. Yeah, it, it felt like that was that was done and dusted, you know. Um, they, they turned a screw, two scores, game over. Um, you know, Scotland have, have really messed up here, um, or Italy have really taken their opportunity. Um, uh, and I, I felt that was that was the game done. Um, but uh, well, nearly. <laughs> yeah, it was, and actually, I've missed another really important thing that happened just before that, which was the amazing chance for Van der Merwe down the left hand side when he had uh, Ali Price back inside, but he was one on one with Capuazzo, and you just think. Like a winger of his um, uh, excellence in that amount of space, you've got to go and take on on the uh, on the fullback one on one. And he kind of cut back inside and ran straight at Couple Watson, who then completed the tackle. It was a it, for me, it would look very strange. I thought he should have really just gone on the outside. Then the offload back in is always an option to Price, who was charging up as well. But I mean, fair play to Couple Watson; it was a great tackle. Yeah, I think he went uh, brawn over brain there a little bit, didn't he? You're probably thinking of the end of the, of the. I think it was the end of the first half when it was the opposite way around, and he held him up over the line, and which was quite. It was funny, wasn't it? Bless him, he kind of he could have put the ball back <laughs> to, to liner maybe, um, but <laughs> that was he knew, didn't he? Cabasa knew that he'd he messed up there and was just giggling, going, "He held me up." So maybe 
maybe he thought he could just barge over him, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, he'll um, you know, he can't he can't have a he can't have a worldie every week. Unfortunately, that's just the way that it is. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it was either that or possibly he was hoping that Price was going to stay on his inside. So he was just running directly at Capuazzo to then maybe pass. And Go because in, Price yeah. cut in, switched instead, maybe mm. maybe that's what happened. I'm not sure. But either way, I just think a winger of that standard in that yeah. situation, you've just got to go and back yourself. He had loads of space, loads of time to, to sort of make that move. And I thought he should have just gone for it. Yeah, it's a weird one, especially after the other week where he's, you know, he scored worldies and you would think he would just go maybe he just felt that he had all the limelight and <laughs> has been getting stick of training during the weeks and passed the ball but yeah well to be rude to be rude yeah. yeah but then you know after that Scotland did get back into the game they played a ton of good phases real patience on attack as well and eventually yeah. Rotzler comes in with the uh, deliberate knock on I, I think I've, it's fair to say uh, which mm. is a penalty. And I was surprised not to see that given as a yellow card. I think we're used to seeing those as yellow cards nowadays. Yeah, I, I was really confused with the whole chat with with um, the, the the officials there because I felt like um, who who was the ref? Um, oh, is he Aussie guy? Any? Um, yeah, Gardner. 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 Yeah, so so I, I think so he had he had said knock on for me and then it got called back by the TMO and then uh, good old um, uh, Carl Dixon who hates being um, having any attention on him um, he was very much saying that there's more to this and I, I felt that what I think I thought Gardner was thinking he was saying it should be a penalty try. Um, because there's a note as two on two, so it's not a penalty try. But that doesn't mean it's not a yellow card. So yellow, if he's done it deliberately, it doesn't matter if there's going to be a try or not. He's done it deliberately. If he's if there's going to be a try, then it's a yellow card and a penalty try. But I just felt it was a bit. It was a bit because you could tell that Dixon was a bit confused at going, and then he, Gardner just took to his gun and said, "No, it's two on two. He wasn't going to score a try." But that doesn't mean it wasn't a, a yellow card. So Italy were very very lucky there to to keep um, keep him on the pitch. They were, that being said, only three minutes left, uh, to be fair. And Skinner scored almost straight after that anyway to make it 31-29. Yeah. Scotland get the ball back and go through phase after phase after phase. And they're making progress as well. Fair play to them. They're getting up the pitch. Italy defended incredibly bravely, incredibly aggressively, but also with phenomenal discipline, I thought. You know, they, they waited for their moment to really strike. And eventually forced a knock on. Potentially, there was a couple of uh, possible forward passes in that movement as well. Um, but Italy forced a knock on. Rome goes wild, and I thought they thoroughly deserved their win. Oh, with without a doubt, it was a fantastic win, and, and thoroughly deserved that that last bit of play. Yeah, fair fair play, Scotland. A bit like um, Ireland against New Zealand, you know, just phase after phase after phase. Um, the discipline in Italy's defence was of the highest order. You know, you watch that back, and you watch how how much of a step they give so that they're not offside. They 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 knew they couldn't give away a pen. And again, I don't know who their their defence coach is. I heard him being interviewed the other week. I think he's a, a Safa, but he whatever he's done, the the technique is just wild and aggressive. Um. But controlled, um, and then when they decide to fight for the ball or, or mess the rook up, it's it's pretty, it's you know, it's huge discipline there. But what a what a great fill up for 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 rugby and for Italian rugby and and um, you know uh, all all the all the stuff around you know how well Portugal did and and, and Georgia um, did in, in in the WC and and the pressure that that Italy were under and you could see in the in the coach's box just the celebrations was just amazing you know it's just they thoroughly deserve it you know and and um can can go and get another win um next week maybe and and, and finish maybe their highest ever um but fair play it was a, a brilliant performance um a brilliant win yeah we're both big fans of italy rugby and and what they try and do and how they go about their business so uh personally i was i was delighted for them yeah Okay, let's round this one up. That's what we think. This is where we think the game was won and lost. 
anything we missed, any big moments that you think made a massive difference that we have, haven't spoken about. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to learn from you in the comments down below. And we'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind. While you're there, it helps other people find it. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And don't forget to get out and play.